Hi, and welcome back. It's day four of your challenge. So I'm here today with uh, my friend Colin, and he's gonna be demonstrating the postures while I teach. Um, make sure to check us out on Instagram. Uh, Colin's Instagram is at yogamonger. Yep. Right. I love that yeah. title, it's a good one. And uh, mine's at Tim Sines Yoga. So you can follow along, some good uh, inspiration, photos, and uh, different yoga stuff that we post on there. Make sure to check that out. Okay, so for today's class, um, you might wanna have a couple blocks as usual. And then we're gonna begin in child's pose. So come into child's pose. So we're doing a mixed bag of starting positions. At the beginning, we were lying down on the back to find spine length. Now in this child's pose, let your breath help to elongate your spine. And just feel that because of the tucked in position of the knees, that you can feel your lower back start to spread and open up a little bit better. And then feel where your breath is across your back ribs. So each day we're just practicing this tuning in to the body, sensing and feeling. Grow your arms out along the mat. Then come up onto your hands and your knees. Curl your toes under and stretch back into your first downward dog. So as you hold in this down dog, feel free to do whatever kind of bendings of the knees you like. You could pedal the legs if you like to help to warm up your legs a bit. Then walk your feet forward to the front of your mat and give your knees a nice bend. Let the spine start to elongate. So let your head drop over and feel with your knees bent. This is kind of cool. You can feel that the hamstrings release more evenly into the stretch. If you try to jam your hips up right away, you'll feel like only parts of the hamstring stretch. So I want you to be able to sense that. Bend the knees as much as you need to so you can feel the hamstring stretch evenly. And then see if you can start to lift the hips up a little bit while still stretching them evenly. Now as you warm up, you'll be able to straighten the legs even more. Come up onto your fingertips and make a flat back, elongate. Then step your left leg back into a lunge. Lower your back knee down. Inhale, raise your arms up. And as you exhale, bend your elbows out to the side like cactus arms. Expand your chest, feel your lats engage. Inhale, your arms back up. Look up. Bring your hands back down to the mat. Curl your back toes under and lift your back knee up. Then stretch your arms straight back behind you. So as you do this, we're gonna to start to turn on the back muscles like we've been working on. Open up the front of the shoulder and feel the back of the shoulders turn on. Then grow your arms all the way long through the reach of your fingertips. Feel your spine elongate, looking for the same neutral spine that we've been working with. Then keeping the length of the spine, lower your left hand down and take your right arm up. Try not to collapse the chest when you put your hand down. Think of your back heel like it's up against the wall and the back leg strong. Find the back ankle line. Then bring your right hand down to the mat. Step into plank pose. Hold in your plank with your chest open. Then bring your right knee up towards your chest. Hold your flat back for a moment. Then round your back, pull the knee up a little higher. And as you inhale, stretch the leg back, find the flat back again. Hold in the plank position with your shoulders right over your wrists. Set that foot down, change legs. Bring your left knee up, keeping the flat back at first. Then round your back and suck the leg up into the rounded back position. As you inhale, stretch back into one-legged plank. Then set the foot down. Glide back to down dog. Walk your feet forward to the front of your mat. Let your head drop. 
Inhale into a flat back again, lengthen your spine. Step your right leg back into the lunge. Lower your knee down. Inhale your arms up. Exhale, bend your elbows out to the side. Inhale, reach your arms up, look up. Bring your hands back down. Curl your back toes, lift your back knee up. As you grow long through the line of your back ankle, stretch your arms back behind you. Good, so feel here your front body lifting up, especially in your middle, to help to support the length of your spine. And then feel the backs of your shoulders turn on to open up your chest. So the stronger we can make those deltoids, as we've been talking about, and the stronger you can make your external rotators, it will help to prevent this like slouching of the shoulders that wants to happen. Then keeping the chest open, all of your awareness in your shoulder girdle, lower your right hand down. It's almost like you have to resist the twist a little, and then twist and take your left arm up. So as you're twisting, navigate straight up through the midline, just like you're seeing Colin do, like you're reaching the crown of your head out through your right ankle line. Good, then bring your left hand back down to the mat. Step into plank pose. Strong in your plank. Then bring your right knee up to your chest. And round your back, pull your knee up. Inhale, reach back into one-legged plank. Change legs, bring the left knee up. Round your back, pull up. Inhale it back into one-legged plank. Change legs, pull your right knee up. Round up. Inhale into one-legged plank. 40 more, pull your left, just kidding, last one, pull your knee, I got you for a second, pull your knee up, round up, inhale, reach it back, great job, stretch back into down dog, glide into plank pose, and lower down onto your belly, then stretch your arms all the way forward, modified Shalabhasana, as you press down through the tops of the feet, turn on your leg muscles, lift the inner kneecaps, Grow your body as long as you can along the mat. Now lift up your legs just an inch and elongate the tailbone as you stretch back through the legs. Then bend the elbows out to the side like cactus position and spread as wide as you can. This is really good, Colin. Spread as wide as you can from the tops of your shoulder blades into your elbows. Start to externally rotate the arms. Turn on those external rotators. Nice, really good. And then keep lengthening. Then stretch the arms straight back behind you. Feel those back shoulders stay strong to keep the chest open. Then place your hands next to your side ribs and roll up just a little bit higher as you press the tops of the feet down. So we'll stay in this low cobra for a moment. Now if you can keep the shoulders open and roll all the way up into up dog and it feels okay on your spine, then go ahead. But if it feels like too much strain on your lower back, I just want you to stay in that lower position. Then glide back to down dog. So just remember, we want to stay in tune with our body. It should feel like you're being invited deeper into the pose, like your body's like, yeah, let's go deeper into the shape. If you try to push deeper and your body's like, uh, I can't breathe, it's not going well, it's not going to benefit you to keep jamming. So just take it slow. Take this challenge at your own pace. Walk your feet forward to the front of your mat. Inhale, elongate your spine, make a flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up, spread your arms out to the side, rotate the arms externally and reach all the way up. And exhale, fold forward, spread the arms out like a swan dive. Inhale into a flat back, lengthen your spine. Step back one leg at a time into a plank pose. Holding your plank with your core strong. Now set your knees down and then shift forward slowly with control, lower all the way onto your belly. Feel your core muscles. Inhale into cobra again. Then hold in your cobra, press the tops of the feet down and broaden right here at the base of the butt cheek. Then hold there, roll up into up dog. If it feels okay on your back and you can keep the front of the shoulders open, the back muscles working, Stretch back into downward dog. 
Walk your feet forward to the front of your mat. Inhale, make a flat back, elongate. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come all the way up, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Skip the Samastiti. Inhale into a flat back, elongate. Step back into plank pose, one leg at a time. Hold strong in your plank. Then set knees down with the chest open. Lower slow with control all the way to your belly. Inhale into Cobra. Hold there. Find the action at the top of the hamstring. Legs firm. Hold there. Roll all the way up into Up Dog. And stretch back into Down Dog. Good. Now from Down Dog, step your right foot up by your right thumb. Set up your back heel for Warrior One. Inhale, raise your arms up. Right hip firms in so that it helps to activate your core so you're not sinking in the lumbar. Hands back down. Step back into Downward Facing Dog. Step your left foot up by your left thumb. Set up your back heel. Firm the left hip in. Inhale, come up to the midline. Long spine, strong core. Exhale the hands back down to the mat and step back to down dog. Look in between your hands, step, walk, or float up to the front of your mat. Inhale, make a flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale into chair pose, bend your knees, set your hips back. Stand and release your arms at your side, Samastiti. Inhale into chair. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back to down dog. Step your right foot, warrior one. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, down dog. Step your left foot, warrior one. Inhale, reach up. Step back, down dog. Now hold in your down dog, or if you'd like, add a vinyasa. Three breaths in down dog, or take the vinyasa. Nice, reconnect into the action of the shoulders, roll from the outer shoulders down. Feel all three, middle three knuckles connect down into the mat, and then start to grow the spine long again even if you have to bend the knees a little bit. So Colin, Colin's an excellent example. He's an advanced practitioner. He can do so many yoga poses beautifully, but he's put this little bend in his knees so that he can find the elongation of his spine. And notice that that little bend is helping him to create more space. So don't try to like jam your legs straight. Don't think like, oh, if I'm gonna be good at yoga, I have to have like straight legs or this or that. Don't have that judgment on yourself. Walk your feet forward to the front of your mat. Inhale, make a flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, chair pose, bend your knees, sit back. Good, then stand, Samastiti. Step your right foot back about three and a half, maybe four feet. Parallel your feet and spread your arms out to the side. Let's go through some of those externally rotated standing poses. So turn your left leg in slightly and turn your right leg all the way out. Then bend your right knee for warrior two. So as you bend your right knee, keep growing from your back leg down into your back foot evenly. And feel that your, uh, all four sides of your waist are tall, so you're connected into your core. Grow your arms even wider without pushing the bottom of the rib cage forward. You'll continue to hear that cue. It's something that we're, we're sticking with for the challenge. Then reach out over your leg and put your hand down onto the outside of your foot. I'm suggesting a block. Take your left arm all the way over. Look for the long line through your back ankle, out through your spine, through the reach of your left arm. Reconnect to your breath. 
Find your drishti in your breath again. Your drishti is your yoga gaze, eyes soft. Feel the breath moving evenly through your body. Let it circulate evenly. Come back up into warrior two. Then straighten your right leg and reach out for triangle pose. So in your triangle, make sure you have the rotation in your right thigh so your knee is pointing straight ahead. And then feel your spine elongate through the line of your right big toe, like I'm pulling you through the crown of your head in the same direction your big toe is pointing. Press through your feet and come back up. Turn your legs to the other side. So this little external sequence that we've been working Warrior two, hold there. Good, pause, connect in your middle. So these standing poses, when they're done well, they'll help to give you all the opening that you need for many of the more advanced postures in yoga. So if you're wondering if there's a, why there's little gaps and holes in your practice, why I can't get this ankle or this hamstring flexible enough, Go into your standing poses, focus on those, see where you can get, uh, not like per perfection in the pose, but a deeper sense in the pose. Then reach out over your leg and put your hand down to the outside of your foot and take your arm all the way over. Feel the connection through your back leg into your back foot again. Feel the length through the sides of your ribs, through the line of your back ankle. Come back up into warrior two. Then straighten your left leg and reach out for triangle. Practice your dristi, eyes soft. Feel your breath moving through your body. Press through your feet, come back up to stand. Turn your left toes in so your feet are parallel. Place your hands on your hips and roll your shoulders back. Inhale. Exhale, fold forward in between your legs. Set your hands down and inhale, make a flat back. Exhale, walk the hands back, let your head drop. Inhale into a flat back. Come back up and lengthen your spine. Exhale, bring your hands to your hips, press through your feet and come all the way up to stand. Now either clasp your hands behind your back or take a strap and roll the shoulders back. So we wanna be able to access this rotation of the upper arms, but if you go to grab your hands and your shoulders turn in like mine, it'd be better to use a strap or a towel so you can find the rotation that Colin's doing. Fold forward in between your legs, whichever one you have, strap or hands. Eventually, as you continue to practice with the strap or whatever, then the backs of the shoulders will get stronger, the pecs will become more open, but you don't wanna to try to go for the full thing if it's not going right. Reach to your feet and come back up. Spread your arms out to the side. Let's add in one more while we're here. Turn the left toes in slightly, turn the right leg all the way out. Then bend your right knee and put your right fingertips down onto the inside of your foot. Let's go to the, see if you can go to the medium block this time. As long as your spine doesn't round over, take your left arm straight up. Now we're gonna to start to practice 
the introduction to binding, because we're going to use this in a couple more days. You're going to want to be able to do this. Okay, so take your left arm and internally rotate it. That's where the, the reference is the bicep. Whatever the biceps does is internal or external. Then slide the hand behind your back to your right outer hip. So even though you've turned the arm inward, I still want you to find an external action in your shoulder. Spin the front of the left shoulder open and then grow your spine and your back ankle long. Make sure your right knee hasn't twisted in. You can pry the right knee open with your right arm, roll that shoulder open and get long. Then take your left arm back up, press to your feet and come back to warrior two. Reverse warrior, flip your palm, reach up. Come back to warrior two, straighten your right leg, and turn your legs to the other side. Bend your left knee. Put your left hand down. Let's go for the medium block. I think if you need the tall block, that's okay too. Expand, create as much space as you can. Then internally rotate that arm. Slide it behind your back to your outer hip. Once the arm slides back, then roll the shoulder open. Grow your spine long. Come back up to warrior two, stretch the arm up, then reverse warrior, flip your palm and inhale. From here we're going to do the escape route. Circle the hands to the mat and step back to down dog or out of vinyasa if it suits you. Now we haven't talked much about the vinyasas, whole vinyasa situation yet. So don't worry if that seems like it's too much for you. We're going to work on getting strong for that. Look in between your hands. Step or hop up to the top of your mat. Inhale, Arda. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair pose. Bend your knees. Sit back. Then take your arms forward. Can you do eagle legs, do you think? Is it okay? Cross your right knee over your left knee. Then cross your right elbow under your left arm, elbow. Eagle arms. Gary an eagle. So I was asking him, he had a little tweak in his knee surfing. So this can be a little extreme on your knee. What you want to make sure is that your bottom knee, the bottom leg knee, isn't twisting inward. So to get the bind, make sure that you then track the knee back into its original position. Hold here for three more breaths. Squeeze in with your legs and feel your spine get taller. Let the tops of the shoulder blades release down and away from your ears as the elbows go forward and up. Uncross your arms and your legs, stand in mountain. Nice job. Feel all that opening, like the blood rushes again. You can feel the whole body open up. Inhale into chair pose. Take your arms forward, cross your other leg up and over, left leg up and over the right, and cross your left elbow under. Make sure that bottom knee isn't twisted in. Let your arms slide deeper into the bind. Feel the release of the tops of the blades, the neck tall, and then see if the arms can go forward and up a bit. Uncross your arms and your legs. Stand tall on mountain. Feel everything open up again. Good job. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Then from here, lift your heels up and slowly lower your buttocks towards your heels, keeping the heels elevated. Then see if you can take your arms forward as long as it's okay on your knees so you're balanced there on your toe mountains. Good, now sit your buttock down onto the mat and bring your knees up into boat position. Let's do this first one with the knees bent and then try to make 
a V shape with your body. So you don't want the knees to go too far away from your chest. You make this tight V shape. Feel your tailbone and your sit bones. Root down through your sit bones and your tailbone. It's like a tripod that's helping you to balance. Then put your fingertips down next to your side and slowly roll down onto your lower back, mid back. Bring the legs in the table again. Lower the head down. Bring the knees right up over top of your hips. Good. Then fingers behind your ears. Feel your spine elongate. Feel that traction sensation we've been working with. Spread the chest, spread the tops of the shoulders from the back, and then slowly send your right leg forward while you grow the spine long. Abs in strong. And change legs. Keep the bottom ribs tipped in, change legs, but don't let the pelvis tuck. Keep the lower back long in its neutral position. Change legs. Change legs. Change legs. Then bring both legs up into tabletop position. Spread your arms out to the side. Hold your knees right up over your hips. And then take your knees over to the right just a third of the way without your left shoulder lifting at all. Keep elongating the spine. Come back to center. Knees over to the left, just a third of the way. Back to center. Over to the right, maybe a little further as long as you can keep the elongation and the left shoulder grounded. Over to the left. Back to center. Now stretch your legs straight up to the ceiling. So we'll practice the Dandasan on the back, how important the Dandasan was I mentioned. Find the length through the legs and your spine long like a stick. Grow the spine as you grow the legs. Open up the four corners of your feet, stretch the legs, stretch through the feet. Good, then bring your fingers behind your ears and crunch up towards your Dandasana legs. Good, so now we'll start to turn on the rectus abdominis. Squeeze those abs, and then take your front ribs and squeeze them towards your front pockets. Slide them down into there, and then see if you can lower your left leg, maybe so it's like a foot above the floor without losing the squeeze of the front ribs. Squeeze them, and then slowly change legs. Keep the squeeze of the front ribs. Slowly change legs. Come on, crunch up off of your shoulders, don't sink back. Slowly change legs. You got it, you're almost there. Bring both legs up, crunch up one more inch, and lower yourself down. Great job. All right, bend your knees. <laughs> Take your feet, it's kind of intense. Bend your knees and uh, set your feet down the width of the mat. And just let your knees swivel over to the right, look to your left. Knees over to the left, look to your right. Come back to center with your knees. Take your feet hip distance apart, and then lift your hips up. Slide a block right underneath on the medium height, and then grab a hold of the sides of your sticky mat. So block goes right underneath your sacrum. That's the thick bony part above uh, at your, just at the bottom of your spine, it's not on your lower back, it's in between the top of the buttocks and the bottom of the spine. So right there. Now as you grab the sides of the mat, spin your biceps out, externally rotate, and feel that the outer shoulder grounds. But don't tuck your shoulders to do it. Still stay broad across your shoulder girdle. Feel the neck long, keep the knees pointing straight ahead, then as you exhale, Control from your core, lift yourself up off the block, pause, keep all that spread for your shoulder girdle, the length of your spine. Make sure the knees didn't push out. Most of us will use glute max to, and push the knees out. Instead, keep the knees pointing straight ahead. Slowly lower your butt back down and exhale, lift back up. Feel the hamstrings turn on evenly. Lower back down. One more time, exhale, lift up and hold.
Then use one hand to slide the block out of the way and lower yourself back down onto the mat. Good job. Cross your right ankle over your left knee and hug your left knee into your chest. As you're holding here, turn your right thigh out and resist the right knee away from you. And these supine stretches are great to help us to be able to access the length of the spine again. You're gonna get nauseated with me saying that phrase by the end of this challenge, I think, but it's so important for turning on your core. So see if you can find that and it'll actually change the stretch that you feel on your hip. Find the elongation instead of just like, how close can I jam my knee? It should be how much space can I create through my spine as I hug my leg in towards me. Change sides, change the cross. Reconnect to your breath. Feel the rhythm of the breath. One thing that we like to do is practice this slower breathing because it helps to calm the nervous system so that the stretch is more attainable, so that your body is resisting the stretch less. So you can play with that. You can practice a slower rhythmic breath, but if it freaks you out at all or it creates more strain, then just give that up and breathe normally. Then uncross your legs and hug your knees into your chest. Last stretch that we'll do, happy baby, reach onto the insides of your knees, grab a hold of the outsides of your feet or your big toes. Let the buttocks drop back down, let the shoulders relax towards the floor. Then set your feet down onto the mat and stretch out for Shavasana, course pose, final relaxation. So take your feet just slightly wider than hip distance to let the leg pits open. You could take the hands a little away from the body, maybe like a foot away so it feels like your armpits can breathe. And let your feet and your legs relax. Let go of the tension in your abdomen. Let the muscles in the back relax, the shoulders and the neck. Relax your hands and your arms. Let the muscles in your face relax, your jaw, empty the jaw, empty the tongue. Soften the scalp. And you might feel that the deeper you relax, the more in tune you are with the vibrational quality in the body, like we've been practicing feeling. You can feel so much more when you're relaxed. When we get stressed out, strained, we become more disconnected from the body. So just feel in this state how much more connected you are, how much more in tune. Then bend your knees. Roll over to your right side. Press yourself up to seated. You're welcome. Sit up tall and bring your palms together. So just take a moment of gratitude here for all the benefits that your yoga practice is bringing you. 
for the shift that comes at, your, at the end of your practice? How good do you feel? Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. So thanks so much for sticking with the challenge so far. Hey, make sure to hit the like button. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Uh, it was really nice to have Colin out today. So um, make sure to follow him on Instagram so you can see what he's got going on. You got anything to promote right now? You got any retreats or anything coming up? No. Okay. Unless you want to bring me on one of yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So check him out at Yoga Monger. And uh, hey, we'll see you next time. Have a great day.